Yo, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Devon back in the flesh for another legendary video. Appreciate you guys coming through, showing your love and support. More importantly, hit that notification bell, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to like this video. So keep the algorithm for this every single video that rolls through, so it gets more viewers like you who enjoy professional wrestling. More importantly, we're getting towards the road of 4,000 subscribers, which is a great accomplishment. More importantly, I appreciate you guys for always showing your love and support for this actual channel. But let's go ahead and get to the nitty gritty, also saucy, and going for review for August 16th, 2024, for Friday Night Smackdown. Tonight's card, we have the appearance of Roman Reigns, who was in the house tonight, to I'm um, pretty sure to address everything that was going to go on with not only taking back his reigns being the tribal chief, but as well as going to battle with the bloodline. As well as we had the Money in the Bank holder Tiffany Stratton having a championship coordination celebration for Queen Nia Jax. We also had DIY taking on Street Profits to crown a number of contenders to take on the WWE Tag Team Champions, the Bloodline, Northern Tomatanga, and Jacob Fatu, who have been dominating 100% on the blueprint. As well as we have on the card tonight, we have Naomi taking on Blair Davenport. After Blair Davenport had been getting the business of the ESTs of WWE and have aligned herself with the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Unholy Union of Isla Dawn and Alpha Fire. As well as we had on night, we had Kevin Owens taking on Gracie Waller in a decent singles match. This was Smash Mouth, but more importantly, they kept us invested when it came to the post-match when we had Cody Rhodes making his appearance. But let's go ahead and get into this view. Appreciate you guys coming through. And let's go ahead and get into this video. Peace you guys. Alright, Friday Night Smackdown started off red hot when it came to everything that initially started off. We started things off when it came to the Queen Coordination. For Friday Night Smackdown, we had Tiffany Stratton being out there. She opened us up when it came to everything. Um, she introduced the Pretty Deadly. And of course, the ring fiasco with the pink balloons, the unicorns. And she introduced her bestie, the WWE Women's Champion, Nia Jax. Nia Jax walked out on the lair. She's sitting on her throne and befits the queen of the ring. She enters the ring and... Tiffany presented her with her title and a pink microphone. Nia is overcome with emotions and tell her that she shouldn't have. Stratton says that she was in her big moment and she just wanted to give back about after everything she has done. Jack says that it's a lot of pink and Tiffany says she wanted it to pop. She asked her if she likes it. Nia says Tiffany been really good to her and she appreciates her and then more about her style that comes about it. She likes how she destroyed Bailey at SummerSlam as you all had seen and she says everyone is going to have to bow down to her and Stratton should start. Tiffany begs off and asks if she means right now when Nia says she does. She says she'll bow down, but first, Pretty Deli are going to sing a song, and they are all going to bow down to her. Then we get a little sneak peek with a, um, Pretty Deli, they're, they're doing a the musical, they launch off with the OD to the Queen, to the Skeptical of Naya. Then an awkward singing starts off when it came to the actual segment, which is kind of awkward. Then things really broke down when Naya thought how great it was until Mia Yam Mi Chen came down with a kindle stick, blasted everybody, and interrupted the situation. She lit up Naya Jax with a couple of shots, and when she went to Stratton, Stratton bailed with a quickness. Mia Yam ended up getting her vengeance on Pretty Deadly by beating them both over, repeatedly over and over, to end the segment after everything broke down. Then we have Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. They're talking with Naomi about they're gonna take out on Humble Union, and Naomi's gonna snatch and drag Belair later on. Then Carmelo Hayes rolls up on those ladies. He comes through and he tries to sell them 
an after party for the victory after Andrade and L. And then he says pretty much the point is that he's down two. And pretty much they, that's pretty much what they hit on, on the home stretch. It's like, hey, you're down two. What are you going to do about it? And they laugh him off and hit the road. They kind of did him wrong. But it was kind of funny seeing how that actually broke down. Do we get ready for Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes? This match was pretty decent. Smash mouth, a lot of back and forth. Everything you could have got when it came to a singles action. I loved everything about it. Had no disappoints. Carmelo was able to pick up the victory by encountering the messenger and was able to get a roll up for it via pinfall after everything had broke down. Things really broke down afterwards where um, Carmelo Hayes started to berate Andrade because he got the victory. But things really broke out when um, Andrade tripped them up. They got into a melee brawl. Security staff came through to break them all off and they were swatting at each other back and forth to break them up after the whole situation. Then we get to Tama Tonga. He presents Solo Sokolo with his garland and he says he's going to tear Roman Reigns limb for limb. More importantly, he's going to Solo tells him to calm down pretty much. And runs that if Roman takes the garland back, which is the Ula Fala, then he'll be tribal chief. And they both will have to acknowledge him, but only if he succeeds to take it back. Then we get ready for Naomi versus Blair Davenport. This match was pretty decent, a lot of back and forth action. More important, these ladies put on a great showcase when it came to everything that goes on when it came to the women's division. We had Roxanne Perez, she was in the house tonight. They displayed a little bit of NXT as having the women's champion on the blue brand tonight to get a little bit of pop, getting ready for NXT in the next couple of weeks. As well as the match continue to go back and forth with so much more. Um, Blair Davenport was able to counter the split-legged moonsault by Naomi. And she was able to hit her with a tree of wall with the double with the double stomp. And then Blair hit that beautiful knee, which she calls, I believe, um, the Kimberly for the win. Then we switch things up to Grayson Waller and Austin Theory using a backstage segment. They're talking to each other. They're going back and forth, discussing how things continue to go on on the press and the backstage. They're shifting about trash talking. Kevin Owens, KO, of course, walks in on that actual segment. Moments later, Grayson Waller is insulting him, but he says he's right. Why is he trying to turn the title match down? And Kevin books himself a match against Grayson to prove that he's not a loser or more run in an easy win. Then, of course, we get the memorial package for Afa Anawawi, which is the other member of the Wild Samoans, Roman Reigns' uncle. I know the family is mourning when it comes to Anawawi and as well as the Fatu family and so many more of that connection line of the bloodline. This is a big heavy blow when it comes to the family. More importantly, he's a generational star and it goes a long way. We get ready for Grayson Waller versus no other than Kevin Owens. The KO show, this match was pretty smash mouth. Everything about this match was truly what it delivered. You got everything that you wanted when it came to the actual match, when it came to singles action. As well, we had a crowd showing an implant um, shock of Ethan Page who was joining to watch the match in the crowd. He was raising the NXT Championship. Did not get a pop whatsoever. The match continued to go back and forth and more importantly, I liked everything about the match. KO was able to go back to his old fashioned move with the pop up power bomb to secure the victory. Where things got interesting was when a town down under grabbed a couple of chairs and they were about to go to town to sneak attack Kevin Owens after Kevin Owens was able to secure the victory. But in post match, um, he's about to hit another power bomb, but things broke down from there. As Cody made his way down there and he has his title and Kevin picks it up first, Owens regrets the belt in his hand and moments before the press, Cody, of course, beating his chest and the heels end up leaving the situation from there. Then we get the Solo Sokoa, who's still talking to, having a conversation with um, 
Tama Tiger says he loves him, but tonight Roman Reigns needs to acknowledge him, and they end up going to a commercial break. They come back from the commercial break, they show us a front row shot of Titus O'Neil, who's in the crowd. He's there live, he's one of those lovely legends, including he's an ambassador for World Wrestling Entertainment. Then we get a nice little video package of Legato Del Fantasma, where Angel is babbling back and forth, excited, but Santos um, bangs on the table and says he's got things complacent and about being disrespected each and every week. More importantly, he talks about the details that they need, El Legato needs to turn things around and take out LA Knight. After this segment broke down, we get an entrance from LA Knight who comes down to the ring, makes entrance to the mic. He stays right with me on the stage. And he, of course, gets into the, let me talk to ya. He trash talks to Gato about their dinner and says the next week, there's a good chance that Santos gets where he is when he knocks the little churro in the dirt. With all that being said, he says that he can call him trash. He might be trash mixed with flash, but the trash will put you on your ass. Any day of the week, any time, when he nails that BFT. Do we get ready for Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, who walks through um, after Mia Yim leaves Nick Aldis' office. Um, they're in a good mood, they laugh her off, and she says she got herself a title match. What have them ladies been doing lately? Of course, um, Chelsea Green gets upset, and she ends up walking directly into Nick Aldis' office, well, along with Piper Niven close door. Where things really got interesting was Nia Jax was able to attack Mia Yim after things had transpired at the championship celebration earlier. She got on the offense, she threw her into Nick Aldis' office, and things broke down after the blindside attack. When Nick Aldis came directly out, he told Nia Jax to, to break it up, go into his office, and of course the staff attended to Mia Yim after things went into a commercial break. Then we get ready for the Street Profits. If everybody loves Street Profits, everybody wants to smoke when it comes to the Street Profits. They were in action against DIY for the tag team number one contenders match. This match was smash mouth, a lot of back and forth. More importantly, it kept me invested when it came to the action. Everybody was able to hit off their technical skill moves. More importantly, it still continued to keep me invested through the course of the actual tag team match. Street Pops were able to pick off the victory by hitting that lovely blockbuster finisher, Doomsday Style, and pin Johnny Gargano to become the number one contenders for the tag team championship. Then we get ready for the closing segment of Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. Solo makes his way out. Tama Tonga's not with him. None of the members of the Bloodline are with him. Um, he demands Orlando to acknowledge him, and more importantly, he gets the OC chance to return from the fans who were red hot and they were chanting, we want Roman. He says that, that he sees how it is, but fine, don't acknowledge him, but one man has to, and he calls Roman Reigns out. He tells him to take the tribal chief garlic from him if he wants it. Roman makes his entrance with the new prelude face style entrance. The crowd was red hot. They were popping for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns kept their body invested and intrigued the majority of his entrance. When he comes through, you know he has a star persona and an aura about him when it comes to Roman Reigns. He comes directly down and, and of course, as he makes his, he makes his entrance, Tom Tucker slides in. And he removes the Ulafala and hands it in just as for Romans to come directly in. He just them to go off into the corner. Solo tries to throw the first punch at Roman. But Roman ends up blocking the situation. Then he, Tonga attacks him from behind. And then of course Reigns was able to get the offense in. As the OTC was able to get things underway. And lay out Tama Tonga with a rock bottom. He throws him directly on the floor. He lands a couple of punches back and forth. 
then of course he hooks Tonga for a power bomb, but Solo recovers enough to meet him with a plunk of punches and throw him in the inside. Solo goes in the ring, and then of course he tries to go for that small spike, but Roman Reigns ends up ducking it, and then he off the ropes and he Superman punches and connects to him. He calls for the spear and Reigns goes for the corner, but he ends up seeing a Uafala. He picks it up with both hands, Bisley feels the weight of it, and he grabs it and he holds races it. And he crowns himself, he puts it directly over his neck, the crowd goes a wall for this. This was a great moment when it came to him for that few seconds. The crowd was so loud, you knew that he was the man. But before he even got to embrace it, Jacob Fatu comes back directly and he lays Roman with a super kick. He mounted, punches him, and then takes him down. He throws the reins into the post very hard, exploding directly into the corner with a hammer, a couple of hammer throws, and then he hurts him with their lovely Sentence um, body drop, which PC has used, or Maga has used multiple different times. He hit Roman so hard, Roman was seeing colors when it came to everything that happened. The small of the world then throws Royans out of the ring like a sack of garbage, pretty much just tossed them out like it was nothing. They cleared the announcer's table and got things squared away to hit the triple power bomb and nail Roman Reigns directly through the actual announcer's table. They're not done from there. They throw Reigns back in and drag him directly into the ring. Tama crowns Solo Sokolo with the Ula Fala and then a new bloodline throws up the one and stands fairly tall as things broke down as Roman Reigns was falling and broke down and that pretty much ended the show. The show was pretty decent when it came to everything that had transpired. More importantly, I look to see more of an investment of how things continue to be progress when it came to the Friday Night Smackdown. The show was pretty decent. It was lackluster in the beginning. In the first half, the second half it picked up when Roman Reigns was able to revive the blue brand and keep us invested. I'm going to be intrigued and look more to seeing how this bloodline civil war continues to transpire. More importantly, seeing how things continue to be shaping up when it comes to Roman Reigns. But more importantly, I appreciate you guys coming through and showing you love and support. 